always loved cats. I grew up with them. Sweet, affectionate cats, small, shy cats, big, clumsy, fluffy cats. I loved their unique personalities and nighttime snuggles, how they'd chase toys and curl up adorably on couches and cushions. When Micah and I first moved in together, I brought my grouchy 17-year-old Siamese with me. Micah wasn't sure if he'd like having cats, but I was pretty determined to change his mind. And change his mind he did. Especially after we got Bill and Loki. What's not to love? They're funny, independent, charismatic, and cuddly. We have to resist the urge to adopt more kittens, so we won't become crazy cat people. You know the stereotype. An older, strange, single person, often with hoarding habits, who lives alone with too many cats and not enough social interaction. They start to get a little weird. In fact, the stereotype is so pervasive that some folks have suggested that cats cause crazy cat ladies, making them behave strangely and worshiping cats above all other creatures, even humans. <laughs> what a silly theory. But actually, what if it's real? Let me introduce you to a little parasite known as Toxoplasma gondii. Toxoplasma gondii is a protozoan parasite that can infect most warm-blooded animals, including humans. But even though they can infect basically any mammal, they can only reproduce sexually in members of the cat family, making cats the only known definitive host for the parasite. The reproductive cycle of T. gondii follows a pattern. First, an animal catches the parasite by ingesting material that's been infected with parasitic oocysts, which contain immature T. gondii. Next, the parasite matures inside their intermediate host and invades muscle and neural tissue, where it forms cysts. When a cat eats an animal that has these cysts, they become infected. Then, inside the cat, the parasite reproduces and forms new oocysts, which are then excreted in the cat's feces. Finally, another animal ingests those cat feces, usually accidentally, and the cycle repeats. Nice, so eating cat poop is bad, and that's how you get the parasite. But humans can contract T. gondii a couple of different ways. In some instances, the parasite enters the body when we eat undercooked meat from an animal that has cysts in its tissue, or rarely through a blood transfusion or organ transplant. But the most common route of transmission is through consuming food or water that's been contaminated with cat feces, or through environmental contact, like changing a litter box for a cat that's carrying the parasite. If a pregnant person contracts T. gondii, they can also transmit the parasite to their fetus via the placenta. Once in humans, the parasite can infect and cause cysts in muscle tissue, around the heart, and in the brain and eyes, leading to a disease called toxoplasmosis. For some folks, this can lead to flu-like symptoms, including body aches, headaches, fever, fatigue, and swollen lymph nodes. People who are immunocompromised can end up with stronger symptoms, ranging from headaches and confusion to seizures, lung problems, and blurred vision. But perhaps the most severe effects of T. gondii are seen in infants who were exposed to the parasite during pregnancy. It can lead to miscarriages and stillbirths, and infants who survive often have serious, lifelong medical issues, including vision and hearing problems, seizures, and mental disability. This is why doctors recommend that pregnant people don't clean or change litter boxes during pregnancy to be sure that they won't contract the parasite during this vulnerable time. Hearing all of that, you may be wondering why we don't hear more about toxoplasmosis. After all, a lot of people have cats. Well, first, not every cat is infected, so having a cat isn't a guarantee that you'll be exposed. And not everyone who contracts T. gondii gets sick. In fact, many people who carry the parasite never even know they have it. However, that doesn't mean the parasite isn't doing anything in your body. While T. gondii can infect lots of different warm-blooded animals, it needs to sexually reproduce in order to survive. And that means the parasite has evolved ways to return back to its only definitive hosts, cats.
Now this is the wild part. Scientists think that T. gondii is actually capable of not only infecting the brains of mammals, but also changing their behavior. This is based on research showing that while most rodents will avoid areas that are marked with cat urine or that smell like cats, rats who have been infected with T. gondii seem to lose that fear and will stroll right through the cat pee, unafraid. And it's not just that the rats are less afraid of predators overall. They actually seem to prefer the smell of cat urine over other carnivores. When scientists dug into this phenomenon more, they found that the parasite was directly affecting the expression of genes related to the production of vasopressin, a hormone linked to circadian rhythms and sexual behaviors in the brain that is also thought to have analgesic effects. In particular, the researchers saw changes in gene expression in the amygdala, a region of the brain associated with aggression and fear. Overall, these changes led to rodents that were less afraid of predators than they should have been. Aside from being less afraid of cat pee, T. gondii infected mice were also more active and less hesitant to explore new areas, and seemed to have lower levels of anxiety. This might be linked to the fact that T. gondii has an enzyme to produce dopamine. In humans, excess dopamine causes risky behavior and impulsivity. So maybe the infection makes these mice act a little bit more reckless than normal. All of these combined indicates that somehow these microscopic parasites have evolved to affect the behavior of small prey animals in ways that would make it easier for cats to catch and eat them, thus increasing the likelihood that the T. gondii would make its way back into the digestive tract of a cat where it can sexually reproduce. This seems pretty absurd, but if you really think about it, it's not too far-fetched. Rabies virus makes animals hyper-aggressive and causes them to foam at the mouth, making it more likely that they'll bite another animal and spread the virus to a new host. And plenty of mind-controlling fungi and parasites exist. Ever heard of the zombie ants? So, getting back to the crazy cat ladies, just like T. gondii is known to affect rodent behavior, some scientists think that the parasite might be able to affect human behavior as well. And there is some evidence that this could be true. Research has indicated that people with T. gondii infections may have some behavioral changes. One Czech scientist in particular, named Jaroslav Flieger, believes that toxoplasmosis is controlling human behavior a lot more than anyone suspects, leading to slower reflexes and increased symptoms of anxiety in individuals carrying the parasite. Several research studies have linked T. gondii infection to schizophrenia, finding that individuals with schizophrenia were two and a half times more likely to test positive for T. gondii antibodies compared to non-schizophrenic counterparts. A few small studies also indicated that people who developed schizophrenia had more exposure to cats as children, though those have mostly been debunked. There are also correlations between having antibodies for T. gondii and other psychiatric conditions like OCD and bipolar disorder. But it might be a sort of chicken or the egg situation. Individuals with schizophrenia or other conditions might just be more at risk of contracting T. gondii due to behavioral changes and the medical treatment they receive because of their neuropsychiatric condition. This research is still pretty spotty and unclear. Researchers have yet to determine what exactly is the relationship between toxoplasmosis and some of these neuropsychiatric conditions. And if T. gondii is partially to blame for these diseases, by what mechanism does the parasite cause all of these changes in the brain? While we've been picking apart how T. gondii affects rodent behavior, we've got a long way to go before we understand its effects on us. But all of that said, having a cat as a child doesn't appear to increase your risk of developing a mental illness as you get older. And it certainly doesn't make you more likely to become a spinster who hoards cats. As far as we can tell, toxoplasmosis doesn't make you more attracted to cat ownership either. 
Crazy cat lady syndrome isn't real, and it's mostly built off of stereotypes that punish women for being single, assuming they must be damaged or mentally ill if they can't find a husband. So folks, love your cats without fear, and maybe just avoid getting cat poop in your mouth, especially if you're pregnant or immunocompromised. But like, you should be doing that anyway. Our cats are indoor only cats because it's safer for them and because it's much better for the local songbirds. They're not very likely to contract Tigangiai, but I sometimes wonder if Loki, who was a stray before he was adopted, brought it with him into our house. That might explain why I can't get enough of his fuzzy belly. What do you think? Are your cats controlling your mind with a parasite? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this episode of Neurotransmissions. Until our next transmission, I'm Ali Astrocyte. Over and out.